Hello, I'm Sam Candler, Dean of the Cathedral of St. Philip, and I deliver our daily midday meditation for today, Tuesday, May the 5th in the year 2020. I will begin by reading a portion of one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 104. I'll pray two colics for us and then conclude with my meditation for the day. This is the last section of Psalm 104, one of the glorious psalms of our scriptures exalting God's creation. Psalm 104, verses 25 through 37. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that leviathan which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather. You open your hand, they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Let us pray a first collect, one of the rarely used collects in our 1979 Book of Common Prayer, a prayer that was new to the 1979 Book of Common Prayer, on page 827, a prayer for the knowledge of God's creation. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our second prayer is on page 828 of the Book of Common Prayer, but it was a prayer that was first used in the 1892 prayer book, a prayer for the harvest of lands and waters. Let us pray. O gracious Father, you open your hand and fill all things living with plenteousness. Bless the lands and waters and multiply the harvest of the world. Let your spirit go forth, that it may renew the face of the earth. Show your loving kindness, that our land may give her increase. And save us from selfish use of what you give, that men and women everywhere may give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Midday Meditation. Its title is, I Saw a Snake, Dangers and Digressions. Bug and I broke our quarantine the other day. We were glad and eager and ready to drive down to Coweta County, about an hour southwest of Atlanta. That's where I grew up, going to school for the first six grades of my life at Elm Street Elementary School in Noonan, Georgia. 
Yeah, that's where Alan Jackson, the country singer, is from. The other day, my mother sent me his recording of the song, The Older I Get, which was actually written by Alan Jackson's nephew, Adam Wright, who also grew up in Noonan. A friend of my mother's in Noonan had apparently run into Adam Wright's mother while walking the other day. But I digress. It's a habit of Southerners who are from where I am from. The point is, Boog and I drove down to see my parents, who still live down there, outside Noonan, in Coweta County. They live in the same house I grew up in. My sister and her husband live nearby on the old farm property. My brother does too. Actually, my son now lives nearby too with his own family. So it was refreshing in a nice gradual way to expand quarantine, to get down there to those familiar woods and pastures. I walked a lot and I bicycled a lot my daughter's family, who live in Atlanta, also got down there with her three children. It was lovely to play and walk and bicycle with them. But I digress. The point is, I saw a snake. It was actually a beautiful snake, a black snake, a long one, almost five feet long. He was perfectly still, lying right by the road as I drove by. I've driven down that road a thousand times. And even as the bushes and trees change, I know what that roadside is supposed to look like. Had I not been down that road a thousand times before, I would not have noticed something different this time. Yes, it was a smooth and silky black snake trying to remain still and not attract attention to itself, but I had to stop and digress. I like snakes, and so I knew it could have been a black racer, as silky and slender as it was, but they usually race off. This was probably a thicker black rat snake who are happily more docile. Well, the next day down there, I saw a second snake that one was definitely a black racer, and I could not catch up to his speed, slipping and sliding through the woods. My mother tells the story of when I was quite young down there. She had been telling me all morning to go outside, to go ride my bicycle. I kept coming back inside. She kept sending me out. I kept returning. Go ride your bicycle, she instructed. I can't ride my bicycle, I replied. Why not, she asked. I said, well, there's a snake under my bicycle. And there was. Yeah, this time of year, no matter what else is going on, snakes reappear. Oaks and pines bud and blossom, and the weather gets warm enough for snakes to come out. It's part of the rhythm of life. Despite everything else going on in the world, the wildlife of the world is moving again. The snakes can be frightening, but these black snakes are fine. And they do keep the mice and rats and rodents away. This rhythm of life, the rhythm of God's creation, can be frightening, but it can also be important, even healthy. I have no idea where this beautiful creation will end up, but I'm sure glad to be a part of it. Psalm 104, verse 25, O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Even the dangers and the digressions can be useful. Digressions happen 
time stops. And what we thought we were headed for is not where we end up at all. We stopped going one way and we turned another. The older I get, they sing. Part of growing older is understanding how wisdom comes with age too. Growing older is meeting those dangers and digressions with patience and turning them into wisdom. Hey, that reminds me, it's my mother's birthday this week. She's getting on up there like the grandma that Elton John sang about in the song Country Comfort. It's a good old country comfort in my bones. Just the sweetest sound my ears have ever known, he sang. But I digress. I will go see her this week.